Hello there guys and welcome back to another epic inexorable maths video. What we're doing in this video is deriving the formula for something called Maclaurin series. You may be familiar with it, you may not be familiar with it. We'll assume that you're not familiar with what Maclaurin series is. What we're going to do is, well what I will do, is I will explain the purpose of it, the motivation behind why we're doing this, and then we will actually derive the formula for generating this thing. So let's begin by, first of all, let me just explain what it is. The idea behind Maclaurin series is that you can express quite a lot of functions in terms of um, a thing called a power series, which basically is like an infinite polynomial. So for example, you can express sine x as a polynomial. It's infinitely long, it has an infinite number of terms, but you can do it. Same with cos x and uh, you know uh, loads, there's loads of functions that can do this. e to the x is another big one. And the reason why we do this is, well, it has many, many applications, but one of the biggest ones is how it factors into complex numbers, because this is actually where Euler's uh, formula comes from, e to the i theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta. This is how you get that formula. So this is a prerequisite to that. Um, and many, many other things. Uh, we'll see in the future that this is actually where the small angle approximations come from in trigonometry. Um, and also the binomial series, which is like the binomial expansion, but the infinite one. Um, that if you are taking something like A-level maths, you will see that in your second year. Um, and that's really important too. So that's the idea behind Maclaurin series. Sometimes it's very nice and easy to deal with functions in terms of a power series or something that looks like a polynomial. Instead of just writing something as sine, you can write it as increasing powers of x, for instance. There's loads of applications behind this thing. And it's very, very, very interesting as well. So let's just dive straight into how we actually get this formula. So you can see here the formula for Maclaurin series. Uh, if you have some f of x, so for example, f of x could be sine x, cos x. Uh, there's another one, the natural log of x plus 1 is another one, e to the x, and many, many, many others. In general, if you have some function, f of x, uh, that is the exact same thing as the function evaluated at zero, that means that's that's your f of zero, plus the derivative evaluated at zero times x, plus the second derivative evaluated at zero divided by two factorial times x squared, and you can see the pattern. And for it to be exactly the same, the number of terms in this series must be inf infinitely many. Um, if you do not use an infinite number of terms, then it's only an approximation, okay? Um, and so you can see here, in general, uh, we have f, the rth derivative of f of x, evaluated at zero divided by r factorial um, times x to the r, that should be there as well, times x to the r. And that's generally the formula for it. So, how do we derive it? Okay, this is brilliant. So let's begin. I love this. Again, it's very, very important. So, let's begin. We want to write, this is the, this is the motivation. What we want to do is we want to write f of x, where again, f of x could be quite a lot of functions, not all of them, I'll explain which ones it can't be in a second, but in general, some function of x, doesn't matter what it is. We want to write this as an infinite polynomial. So what that means is we want to write this as some constant term, we'll say a, uh, or a of zero, that just means the zeroth term or something like that. Not a mathematical operation, it does not mean a to the power of zero or anything like that, it just means a zero, plus a1, which again is just another constant. These are just constant numbers here, um, but times x. Plus a2 times x squared, plus a3 times x cubed, plus a4 times x to the 4, plus, and so on. Again, goes on for infinity. Infin infinitely many terms here, guys. That's the idea. That's what we want to do. So we need to figure out, basically, what is a0, what is a1, what is a2, what is a3. If we can figure out what those are, then we are done. And that's going to be brilliant. So we want a general idea for this. So how do we how do we find out what a0, a1, a2, and so on are? Well, many people might say, hold on, what about if we evaluate... Uh, we, first of all, it's very easy to find out what a0 is. Because we can just say that if we put um, a 0 where x is, so for example, f of 0, 
If we do this, then we get a0 plus a1 times 0 plus a2 times 0 squared plus a3 times 0 cubed. And you see the pattern. Every single term disappears except a0. So we know that a0 is equal to f of 0. That means the function evaluated at 0. So, you know, if you had, if f of x was sine x, a0 would be sine of 0, which would be 0, hypothetically. Okay, but what about all of the others? Now, you might say, okay, what if we divided everything by x and then and then went again, basically? Because then you'd have uh, an a1 on its own, right? Because if you, if you look at this term here, you divide by x, you get a1 on its own. It's like, brilliant, brilliant. The issue with that, though, is that you'd also have to divide a0 by x and then again, you'd have to evaluate at zero. And then you'd have this a zero over zero term, which is bad news. We don't really want that. So we can't divide by zero. And this is where the calculus comes in. This is really awesome. One thing that we can do is we can actually differentiate the entire thing. And it's not too hard. So what we can do is we can say, okay, then uh, the derivative of our f of x is equal to, and we individually use the power rule to differentiate every single term. So the derivative of a0 is just 0 because that's a constant. The derivative of a1 times x is just a1. The derivative of a2 times x squared is going to be 2a2 times x, just using the power rule. The next term, a3 times x cubed, that's going to be 3 a3 times x squared. Uh, the next one, a4 times x to the 4, that's going to be 4a4 to the x cubed. Um, and of course, we can, let's do, uh, let's do a couple more terms here. So the next term would be, I haven't written it, but the next term here would be a5x to the 5. So that give us 5a5x to the 4. And we'll do one more. The next term here would be uh, let me just move that a little bit. It would be a6x to the 6. So the derivative of that term would be 6a6x to the 5. Okay. Again, it does go on for an infinite number of terms, but we're obviously not going to do an infinite number of derivatives because that would take quite a long time, an infinite amount of time at that. But that's the general pattern, right? Because what we want is we want to see a pattern here. So again, we can figure out what a1 is now. We know what a1 is. We can say that f dash of zero or f prime of zero or have you say that is going to be a1 because again if you evaluate the derivative at zero you get a1 plus 2a2 times zero which is zero plus 3a3 times zero squared which is zero plus 4a to the four times zero cubed which is zero and you can see the pattern it's just going to be zero forever but the first term remains so a1 is equal to the derivative of f of x evaluated at zero Okay, brilliant. Next one, we need to differentiate again. So f double prime of x. Okay, so we need to differentiate this line here. Take the second derivative. Okay, good. So a1 differentiated goes to zero. 2a2 times x. That just becomes 2a2, doesn't it? That term there. 3a3 times x squared. That's going to be 6a3x. 4a4 uh, times x cubed, this guy here, that's going to be 12a4x squared. 5a5 uh, times x to the 4, that's going to be 20a5x to the 3, just like that. Uh, 6a6x to the 5, that's going to be 30 a6 x to the 4 and again it goes on forever there's an infinite number of terms so we have to keep going but obviously we're not going to actually keep going okay and how do we find a2 we want a2 we want all of the a's so how do we find the next term a2 well it's slightly different to the previous two again if we evaluate this thing at zero we get f double dash of zero or double prime is equal to 2 a2 plus and then we have to evaluate all of the next terms at zero but Again, if we evaluate the next terms at zero, they all just go to zero. 6a3 times zero. 12a to 12a4 times zero squared. That's just zero. 
28, uh, 20 a5 x cubed when x is 0, 20 a5 0 cubed, that's just 0. And again, it keeps going. So the second derivative at 0 is 2 a2. But we don't want 2a2, we just want a2. This means that a2 on its own is equal to the second derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 2. Okay, good. Next one, let's do another one. Okay, f triple dash of x. So what we need to do is we need to differentiate this line to get the third derivative. So 2a2, that's a constant, that goes to 0. 6a3 times x. That becomes just 6a3. 12a4 times x squared. That becomes 24a4 times x. Okay. 20a5 x cubed becomes 60a5 x squared. And 30a6 x to the 4 simply becomes 120a6 x to the power of 3. And again, it goes on forever, just like that. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing a pattern by now. If we want f triple dash of 0, that's going to be equal to 6a cubed plus everything else goes to 0 because, we again, we're evaluating these at 0, so the x's become zeros. But again, we don't want 6a3, th uh, we just want a3, which means the a3, if we divide both sides by 6, is equal to f triple prime of 0. That's the third derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 6. Okay. All right. Let's do one more just for the sake of showing you what's about to happen. Because it all looks very strange at the moment. I do know. But we're going to regroup in a second. So to find the fourth derivative, we need to differentiate the third derivative. So we then get f 1, 2, 3, 4 of x is equal to 683, that's a constant, that disappears, 24a4x, that goes to 24a4, okay, 60a5x squared, that becomes 120a5x, good, and then 120a6x cubed simply becomes 360a6x squared, and again, goes on forever brilliant and then all we need to do is evaluate this guy one two three four at zero and we get 24 a4 don't we because again they all go to zero other than that first term which means if we want a4 on its own that's equal to f one two three four of zero divided by 24 brilliant okay so let's just regroup for a second and I will circle all of our terms so we know which ones we've got here. So the first term uh, is simply uh, we just end up with a0. a0 is the first term. That's simply equal to f of 0. Good. a1 is simply equal to f uh, prime at 0. That's the derivative at 0. a2 is equal to f double prime of 0 divided by 2, a3 is equal to f triple prime of 0 evaluated at 3, a4 is f quadruple prime of 0 evaluated at 24, and so on. Now, it's pretty obvious what's going on. Each, so, you know, in general, a n has the nth derivative of your f of uh, x and then evaluated at 0. So a4 has the fourth derivative of f of x evaluated at 0. Um, so a5 is going to have the fifth derivative of f of x evaluated at 0. The mystery though is what's the pattern of the constants that you're dividing that derivative by, right? It's like, okay, well the first two, they're being divided by like 1, right? A, this is a0, that's a0 divided by 1. a1, that's a1 divided by 1. But then a2 gets divided by 2, a3 gets divided by 6, a4 gets divided by 24. So what's the pattern? Turns out that if you really look at this pattern, these are actually the factorials, right? A0, that's actually um, A0 divided by 0 factorial. 0 factorial is equal to 1. And I have a video showing why if you don't believe me. 1 factorial is equal to 1. 2 factorial is equal to 2. 3 factorial is equal to 6. 
4 factorial is equal to 24 and you can see that's what's happening there so in general in general we can see here a of n or i'll use r actually a of r is equal to f the r derivative evaluated at zero divided by r factorial that is the pattern and that's basically on the sort of thing that like we start at when r is zero so it's kind of like the nth term but we start when r is equal to zero not not one just to be clear so what do we get okay well remember the entire point of this concept the entire point was so that we could rewrite f of x as a0 plus a1x plus a2x squared and stuff like and just go on forever this line here that's the entire idea we know what a0 is we know what a1 is we know what a2 is and so on we know all of them there's a formula to find each a r or a n or whatever you want to call it so substituting all of those values back into that formula um, what we get is that f of x is equal to a0 a0 was equal to f of 0 plus a1x a1 was equal to f prime of 0 and it's being times by x because that's what we wrote originally right we said that we're saying f of x is going to be a0 plus a1 times x plus a2 times x squared so we do need to times all of these by your x your x squared your x cubed and so on we said that a2 was equal to f second derivative of 0 divided by 2 didn't we and that's times by x squared because again the a2 is times by x squared we said that the third derivative is divided by 6 which is equal to 3 factorial so we can write 6 as 3 factorial they're the same thing remember the factorials are simply the uh, so you know this is 3 times 2 times 1 and so on simply uh, decreasing integers until you get to 1 and that's being times by x cubed the fourth term that we derived was the fourth derivative evaluated at 0 divided by 24 but what is 24 do you remember that right there you can see it what is 24 guys it's 4 factorial again it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 x to the 4 plus and it goes on forever it goes on forever but this is the pattern also you might be wondering what happened to the factorials in the first two terms they're still there this is over 0 factorial and it's still being it's kind of it's kind of like it's being times by x to the 0 right x to the 0 that's just equal to 1 and then this is over 1 factorial 1 factorial is just equal to 1 so it doesn't change its value 0 factorial and 1 factorial are both just equal to 1 so that's we can do that we can write it like that and as you can see there's a really nice formula here f of x is f of 0 over 0 factorial plus uh, the first derivative times x over 1 factorial second derivative times x squared over 2 factorial third derivative x cubed over 3 factorial and so on and it goes on forever and uh, that is the derivation of the Maclaurin series that's where it comes from uh, we'll do some videos in the future actually showing the specific ones for uh, different functions this is all very arbitrary if you're a little bit lost if you're a little bit confused watch a video about um, me deriving you know sine x or cos x or something like that hopefully it should all fall into place thank you guys so much for watching highly appreciate it i'll see you in the next video cheers